The Structure Deterministic Model 2.0, or SDM 2.0, is a structured deterministic model. Its structured guidance walks the user step by step through the model to estimate exposure by considering the most relevant exposure determinants. The outcome is a point estimate of the 95th percentile of the airborne concentration. This point estimate is a deterministic outcome. It represents the personal exposure of a worker or group of workers that is then compared to an occupational exposure limit, or OEL, and the ratio of the personal exposure estimate to the OEL produces a categorical outcome of exposure. The tool applies to pure or relatively pure volatile or semi-volatile chemicals and chemical mixtures through checklist 1 and fibers, particulates, and aerosols through checklist 2. As you can see here, the SDM 2.0 is a colorful, visually informative tool. The tool is augmented by the SDM 2.0 support file, which we'll look at a bit later. As soon as you open the file, enable macros. Since I've already completed this action, we'll move to the next step, which is to select the correct sizing for displaying the dashboard on the computer. This is done by selecting the zoom option that aligns with the computer and operating system on which the tool is being used. For my setup, it's 10, uh, 1080. The middle section of the dashboard includes links to the algorithms that are used for the different types of agents. Before we go further into the tool, it's important to point out the information contained in the lower section. On the left, the user is alerted to the existence and purpose of the support file. On the right, we reference the AIHA publication, A Strategy for Assessing and Managing Occupational Exposures, 4th edition, because it provides an expanded discussion of the basis for much of the contents of the tool. Note the copyright protection, reflecting the significant intellectual property contained in the tool. The SDM 2.0 has been licensed by the University of Minnesota and can be downloaded free of charge once a license agreement has been completed. Checklist 1, on the left side of the dashboard, applies to the scenarios involving pure or relatively pure volatile or semi-volatile chemicals and chemical mixtures. First we'll focus on pure chemicals and later we'll talk about chemical mixtures. The algorithms used for checklist 1 predict the concentration of the chemical that becomes airborne primarily due to, eva to evaporation, that is, chemical vapors that form under atmospheric conditions. Using these algorithms to estimate the airborne concentrations of the chemicals that are under pressure when released or that are the result of thermal decomposition is not recommended and any output from the tool that's for these scenarios should be interpreted with caution. Clicking on the blue arrow next to checklist number one, the tool will take us to checklist number one. Here you can see the input dashboard of checklist one. Each step in the modeling process is numbered to help guide you and ensure, you, ensure that nothing is missing. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the steps in checklist one. The colors of cells in SDM 2.0 have a consistent meaning. Green shaded cells allow or require the user to input information, while the gray cells are populated by SDM 2.0 after inputting some information. Start checklist one, input, at step one. For your records, it's helpful to name the scenario that the tool is being used for and identify the user who is using the tool. These two fields are optional. The tool will record the current date. It will also default to an ambient temperature of 25 degrees C. In step two, the user has the option of selecting from one of two databases to select the chemical or substance of interest. The SDM database contains about 600 chemicals with related chemical information. The chemical is selected by using either the CAS search, denoted by the magnifying glass symbol, or by using the drop-down menu. 
as you can see for this demonstration of selected toluene. Once the chemical is selected, the chemical property fields, including the molecular weight, denoted by the MW, and chemical abstract number, denoted by CAS, on the dashboard are populated. You can see how the chemical property cells have been populated with the data relevant to toluene here. We'll discuss setting up the customized user's database later, but very briefly, this is a customized database that can be set up by the user or user's organization to include proprietary chemicals or chemicals that are desired but not included in the SDM database. Note the green shaded cell denoted W%. This is a required field. The user must input a value for the weight percent of the chemical. For a pure chemical, the user would enter 100% here. Next, the user has three options for the vapor pressure value. If the Antoine option is selected, a vapor pressure value derived from the Antoine equation is displayed in the gray shaded box, seen here on the right side of the screen. More information about the Antoine equation is included in the support file, which we'll look at a bit later. Alternatively, the user can select values that are contained in the STM database by selecting the button labeled DB. A third option is a user-defined value that can be entered by selecting the button labeled User. In this case, once the User button is activated, the gray shaded field disappears and a green shaded cell appears for the user to, en to manually enter a value for vapor pressure. In step 3, the user must select the Occupational Exposure Limit, or OEL. Published OELs from the agencies are shown in the column on the left of the dashboard, uh, displayed for the chemical of interest, provided it's in the SDM database. The list, is, list of agencies and organizations shown here is not a comprehensive list, Rather, they represent the most commonly used OELs in North America. Similarly, in the smaller table on the right, the acute exposure guideline levels, or AGLs, that are established by the US EPA are displayed. ACGIH OELs are a special case and will be discussed in, on the next slide. For now, note that the word hub is green, which tells me that there is a TLV for this chemical. Three types of OELs are shown in the large OEL table. An 8-hour time-weighted average, or TWA, a short-term exposure limit, or STL, and ceiling limits. ACGIH OELs for specific chemicals can be seen by linking to the data hub located on the ACGIH website. When the user clicks on the hub button on the input page, they're taken to the chemical specific summary page on the ACGIH website. Note for this link to work, the user must have internet access. ACGIH members can gain access to the full documentation showing the basis for the TLV with just a click by simply logging into their account. Here we see that the ACGIH TLV for toluene is 20 parts per million and we'll use this OEL as, a, as our choice for this, for this demonstration. Recall that I indicated that this is a pure chemical by entering 100% into the weight percent cell. The happy face emoji shown to the right of this field indicates the value is valid. The entry for this field is complete. Once the three required values, so weight percent, vapor pressure, and OEL are entered, the blue emoji will also change from a sad to a happy face and this indicates that the information can be transferred to the table shown on the right. In this example, after the inputs were completed for toluene, the data was transferred to the table. Since the weight of the chemical, cons cons uh, since the weight of the chemical constituent totals 100%, the data is now ready to move to step 4, which is transferring the data to the analysis table located on the report page. This is done by clicking on the red arrow. When the transfer is done, a confirmation message will be displayed, as shown here. 
The report page is formatted to display the inputs and outputs on the same page. It is highly visual and interactive so that the user can see the impact of changing specific inputs. There is a free text space at the bottom of the page to capture important scenario details or comments. The single page format can be saved as a PDF and printed. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look. While the chemical composition and chemical property data were entered on the input page, two more inputs are required and are shown on the right hand side of the report page. The first one is the health effects rating. The number selected corresponds to the type and severity of health effect of the chemical or chemical mixture. We'll cover the health effects rating in more detail when we go over the support file. The other input needed to complete the assessment is the observed level of control. The drop-down menu provides a range of options to describe the environment with respect to ventilation. GGV denotes good general ventilation, and this could be from natural or mechanical ventilation. LEV denotes local exhaust ventilation. The health effects ranking for the mixtures is shown on the right of the report page, showing both the exposure control category and health risk ranking. Both types of information are needed to facilitate risk assessment and risk management recommendations and risk communication. If you place your cursor over the red indicators in the upper right corners of the cells of the control options, the comment box will appear showing additional contextual detail about that control. The scenario parameter data and chemical specific data can be seen in the top left section of the report. In addition to the chemical constituent data, the tool has calculated the molecular weight, adjusted vapor pressure of the OEL for the mixture, and these inputs are also shown in the top left section of the report. The predicted airborne concentration representing a point estimate of the 95th percentile exposure is shown in the analysis table for each level of control. This allows the user to see how the airborne concentration changes when a different level of control is used. In the columns on the far right of the report, the exposure control category for each component is displayed, again according to the level of control. The exposure control category, or ECC, that corresponds to the level of control that was selected from the drop-down menu is shaded, and in this example it shows an ECC of 3 for toluene. Remember that you can save this page as a PDF. Now let's take a look at Checklist 2. Checklist 2 is much more straightforward compared to Checklist 1, and, is the input and, out, as the, and the input and output are shown on the same screen. This checklist applies to fibers, particulates, and aerosols. The first step for Checklist 2 is to select the range within which the OEL belongs from the drop-down menu as shown here. The tool will determine the required level of control, abbreviated on the dashboard as REQLC, based on the OEL range. The next step is to select the observed level of control abbreviated on the dashboard as OBSLC. After the OEL range and the observed level of control have been entered, the decision logic is applied and a predicted ECC appears at the bottom of the dashboard. Note that a concentration is not directly estimated with Checklist 2.